good evening. Welcome on this uh, brilliant summer's evening. Uh, yeah, I know that England are playing at 8 o'clock, but we'll be finished before then, I do promise you. And do stay with us, because as ever, I've got a couple of interesting guests this evening. A couple of guys that know each other very well from way back. Rotherham United connections, the pair of them, and Sheffield Wednesday connections, the pair as well. Introducing, for his debut here on uh, Sheffield Live TV, Paul Smith, the former Sheffield Wednesday physio. Paul, you're, you're treading in your father's footsteps because uh, Alan's, Alan's been here yeah. as a guest. He arrived about an hour early. He's a bit like Dickie Bird, like <laughs> yeah, that, isn't he? Very you get, much like that. You get there early. Whereas you were on time, but you got somewhere stranded within this uh, the labyrinthine building that we're in <laughs> yeah. and, and couldn't work out where you were or how to get Didn't out. Didn't have a clue. Didn't right. have a clue. Okay. Well. But the story ends well. <laughs> Matt Hamshaw, well, a hat trick for you. A hat trick of Yeah, weeks. I'm waiting for my match ball. Well, I'll probably receive it after, but. There you go. We'll, well we're running out of match balls because <laughs> we've got quite a few people on for a, a third time. Rotherham United now, of course, uh, first team coach, uh, former Al between the years of uh, 1996 and 2000. And Five, I think, I think that's right. And still only 37 years of age. Yeah. Still of a playing age, Matt. Well, I don't know about that now. My, <laughs> my physique isn't like our managers, so uh, I might have to give up on that. But um, yeah, yeah, no, it's still relatively young, but really, really enjoying it. Uh, Rotherham, obviously, disappointing to get relegated, but I think we put up a, a courageous fight, and hopefully, we'll be strong again this season. It doesn't have the air of a relegated club about it. it doesn't have the air of a hangover or any gloom. Or doom, and is that partly the personality of the manager, or is that just because you've got good people there? I, I think a bit of both, to be honest. I think yeah. personality of manager has been um, obviously a key thing for the club, uh, the group of players that we've had. Obviously, we, we, we've lost Will today, um, but I think that shows how well that the group of players did, and I know there's been other players linked, and um, you want that to be the case, really. I, obviously, yeah. they did really well in the championship, and. Um, I th I, we probably got relegated, obviously, because we didn't win enough games. But I think we had 15 draws within that, and yeah. you know, a couple of goals here and there in those games. Um, and who knows? But we live to fight another day. Well, absolutely, you were you were competitive in most games, and you had some late heartbreaking goals that you conceded that uh, kind of changed everything. We'll talk about the transfer deals that you've been involved in. It's been a very busy week. I think you've got four new players in the building now. There might be some more to come. Uh, and Paul, of course. Your Rotherham connections too. You used to work there. I did uh, before before Sheffield Wednesday. So you have some feeling for the Millers. Absolutely, um, yeah. Well, as a young lad, you know, Dad was the physio there uh, before moving to Blackpool. So yeah, lived in Rotherham a long time as well. So got an, got an affinity to the club. Of course, we'll talk later about you and I teaming up as joint managers uh, at, at the weekend for a charity game on uh, on Saturday. So <laughs> we, were, we were talking tactics, uh, weren't we, uh, loosely yeah. before coming on. Sheffield Wednesday, um, you obviously take a keen interest. You were physio down there for what, eight, eight years, eight something years. like that? Yeah. So, you know, do you regard it as your team, the, the team Absolutely. that you support? Absolutely. Lifelong Wednesday fan. Right. Yeah. And, and so, what do, you, what do you make of it? I, we'll talk to you in a minute about, about the proliferation, there's a, there's a word, and I'll manage to say it, of injuries there. Mm. That I think Steve Bruce felt he's ne never encountered so many, you know, in a first-team squad. But generally, um, the state of the club at the moment, some uncertainty about what's happening off the field with the transfer embargo. But the management, do you feel the management now is in the right, right hands to go forward? Absolutely. Steve's obviously a top, top manager, and I think we're in really good hands to take the club forward, yeah. How do you see that one, uh, Matt, as a, as, a, as a former player, and uh, a player of some distinction? We're going to see a certain goal, by the way, in a minute. <laughs> uh, you obviously keep an eye on the Owls, too, pretty closely. Yeah, definitely, yeah, I, I agree. I think that Steve will do a, a really good job there. I think, um, obviously, the fact uh, of how well Sheffield United's done this season, but... Um, they, they were excellent this year, to be honest, and Chris and Alan did a fantastic job. And I think the fact that, obviously, Wednesday struggled a little bit kind of rubbed the salt in the wounds, but I think, you know, the run that they had with Steve, um, he brought a lot of players back into the squad, and you'd really expect them to be there or thereabouts again this season. You seem to appreciate the players that the previous manager didn't appreciate, and that, you know, perhaps it wasn't rocket science that... Uh yeah, I, th I think sometimes it can be difficult in those situations. You, you go into a football club and 
you want to put your stamp on it and the previous manager obviously wanted to do something. At the time, I think they've picked a couple of results up early, but then had a real bad patch. And, you know, it was no surprise. Obviously, I'm good friends with Lee Bowen, and he did a fantastic job to almost get the fans back on side and, and get the club bouncing again. And then the fact, obviously, Steve took over. Um, as I said, they did really well uh, when, when he took over, and I would expect them to be there or thereabouts, as I said earlier, um, mm. certainly next season. There's a bit of recruitment uh, being lined up, if not completed, because of this, what, what will prove, I think, to be a technicality of the soft uh, transfer embargo. But we were saying before coming on air, there doesn't seem to be as much money around the transfer market in the championship this summer as there has been previously. No, I, I would agree, Alan. I think that um, it's, uh, it's strange, really. You, you see a lot of money spent usually in championship by this stage. Obviously, financial fair play has been questioned a lot uh, over the last few months. I know Middlesbrough chairman obviously wanted everybody to be really clear on, on what were happening within their football clubs, and some clubs didn't agree with that, etc. But um, I just think that the state of financial fair play has meant that a lot of clubs... Um, they can't really bring players in and, and, and they're arguably the bigger clubs and it triggers down so the Premier League lads get a move and it triggers to the Championship, yeah. the bigger clubs get moved so I mean we're fortunate at Rotherham that we have, we have a really well run club, uh, the chairman runs it fantastically well and um, however you know other clubs that do spend and they have owners who have a lot of money who want to get to the Premier League and sometimes they chase that dream and there's only three teams can go from that league and you yeah. probably have 16 who think they can so there's a recognition I think that they've <laughs> overstretched in a lot of cases and they can't carry on doing that um, and yet the EFL's what is it profitability and sustainability mm -hmm. regulation it used to be called financial fair play seems to be being got round you know Derby County did and previously mm -hmm. Aston Villa mm -hmm. did Sheffield Wednesday seem to be in the mm -hmm. process getting getting around it um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens. The, I'll come back to the transfer manoeuvres at Rotherham in a minute. Um, the no, sheer number of injuries, it, it was almost as if, if you were a good player, you were injured at, uh, for, for a spell last season at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, being outside of it, looking in now, was there anything comparable in your eight years t to that? You know, to, to that extent? No, we didn't ever experience anything like that, Alan, to be honest. I think you know the record injury record when I was there with the lads I worked with was was very very good. Um, never really known anything like that. I was brought into the club initially by Brian Laws, and I think at one stage there was 13 players injured. So I was I was brought in really to try and sort everything out, which I like to think we did quite quite successfully. So what do you, I mean, obviously you're not inside the building and, no. and, and you don't know. So, so what's your reaction to seeing that? I mean, I know it shocked Steve Bruce for a start. I couldn't believe it. Mm. Could you? <laughs> well, no, but these, sometimes these things happen in football. You can't, you can't pinpoint, you know, mm. what, what the issues are from the outside. I'm sure the people on the inside have a, have a better idea of what's going on. Can it be one of those things, just one of those things, or is this... It, has, it, it happens at Arsenal, it's happened at Newcastle United, to name two. Um, it isn't very common, but, you know, sometimes these things do happen. Is it a cycle or is there anything Steve Bruce can do? I mean, he's brought in a fitness expert, I think, yeah. uh, behind Tony the scenes. Struggling, yeah. Do Tony, you know Tony Stroke? Yeah, he worked with me with England Youth and he's been at Man United, so um, it should be a good appointment. But again, I mean, it's difficult. Obviously, Sponge is a physio and is a good physio, yeah. but I think sometimes you have to look at recruitment. Certainly, when you when you're bringing players in, they have to be a player who, who has played a lot of games, and I think sometimes has been risk taken. Um, certainly, if that's from the outside looking, yeah. and, and obviously I can only speak from what we do at our club, but you have to make sure that these players can play plenty of games. And as you know, our manager is massive on fitness and, and all the rest of it, and. We go through a lot of checks and I think sometimes physios, etc., fitness coaches do end up getting brunt of it. But if you don't recruit the right people into your club, then they are going to pick up injuries. And if they're used to playing five, six <coughs> games a season, that'll what happen. You can't miraculously turn that around. No. Do you know Tony Strudberg? I don't. I just know he's got an excellent reputation. Yeah. 
But talking of taking mm. risks, we, you know, during my time, we took risks. Yeah. Sam Hutchinson's a risk. Chris Kirkland's a risk. Mm. But we managed to keep him on the pitch. Yeah, Sam Hutchinson, uh, you know, it's remarkable that he was even still playing when he, when yeah. he mm. joined Sheffield Wednesday. But for that, you wouldn't have had a, a hope of, of, of signing a player of that, yeah, that exactly, quality, yeah. really, would you? Yeah. What was he like to work with? Great, Sam. Yeah. yeah. Very, very fit lad. Dedicated. You know, he'd do everything right. So, yeah, he was, he was really good and we just managed him well. What a massive difference it would be if you could say guarantee that he could play 35 games next season. I think you'd be saying, yeah, I'm looking at that team to be around top six because he's that good. Yeah. What do you do? You, yeah. Do you concur with that? Do you? Yeah, I think I think that? he's a big player. A, he look, from the outside again, he looks to be a big player on the pitch, a big player in the changing room. Yeah. Somebody who can get people motivated. Um, I think that when obviously Lee brought him back and Steve carried on, you saw a big di change in the results. Um, and, and as I said, when, when we ever s set up against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, we always felt they were probably stronger with him than without him. Yeah, providing he can stay on the field, of course, I, you know, not get injured and not get yellow carded or sent off or substituted by his own manager to keep him on the field. Mm. Seems to have taken a long time for that penny to drop. Mm. There were just signs last season that he was thinking, well, the referee and the game isn't going to change, so I'll have to. Yeah. And I know Lee Bullen, from talking to him, was very strong on that point. And maybe Bully's had a, an Im influence there, I would, do you think? I would have thought so, yeah. You know, the league's tough enough <laughs> without getting a man sent off. It, yeah. um, so obviously you need to keep your players on. I know it's a, a real logical thing to say, but um, you need to keep 11 on the pitch. And, you know, if it is there, it keeps getting silly bookings. And some of them have been silly along the way, then it is down to a coach um, to... to grab him really and say look come on otherwise you're not going to keep your place in team so I'm sure Lee has. Uh, well I, he's told me he has <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we know we're on there and that was pretty early on that was when, when he was caretaker yeah I think it was one of his his big opening moves was bringing him back yeah and kind of laying the law I don't know laying the law down but strongly advising yeah, yeah. well you, you need to do that sometimes yeah um transfer moves then um in terms of Rotherham, first of all, I mean, the topical one today is Will Vaux going to Neil Warnock's Cardiff City. Neil, of course, knows all about Rotherham and yeah. players there and how good a player Will Vaux is. For th about three and a half million pounds, I think I saw quoted today, um, which in the context of the transfer market as it is at the moment, is quite big money for the championship this summer. Yeah, I, I th look, Will, Will's done fantastically well for us. Uh, obviously, when we, we got relegated out of the championship the last time, um, it was a poor team and, and Will won at Shining Lights winning that. He had a fantastic League One campaign and he's carried that on into this season and fair play to him, you know, we've he's, he's given the club great service is a is a fantastic lad i can't speak high enough of him as a lad obviously does a lot of work with bluebell ward etc and you know within the community is is, is everything that the manager emphasizes in changing room really really good player on and off the field and there would have been plenty of interest in him besides cardiff i would have thought yeah i think there was yeah i think there were a lot of interest in him but you know um that the manager and, and the chairman and obviously we brought rob scott in now as at a recruitment of have um, been back and forth with clubs, and I think it's a good deal for everybody. Yeah, it gives you some flexibility, perhaps as well, um, to bring more in. Uh, you've completed a fourth signing today. Uh, how many more do you think that Warren is working on? Uh, uh, well, we've, we've had a meeting this afternoon. Um, th there'll be a, there'll be a few more. Um, we know which areas we're looking. Uh, hopefully, there should be a couple in the next four to five days. We're expecting. Uh, we then go to Germany pre-season, so it might quieten off a little bit, but I think there'll be uh, some goings and, and, and obviously a, a few more coming in. Yeah, hopefully the goings don't include Samir Jai uh, or Michael Smith. No, well, uh, we've got everything crossed that that shouldn't happen. Um, they're both fantastic, fantastic players for us, done really, really well, and I'm sure it, um, we'll, we'll be doing everything in our powers to keep them. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about prospects for next season. There, there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, an overhang. Perhaps come to that in part two. Before we have a little flashback to uh, a moment that uh, he'll be delighted to be reminded <laughs> of now here. Uh, and we all will actually, because those of us who were there like to see it again. Before that, uh, 
Freddy Ladapo or Ladapo or however he's pronounced, club record signing by Rotherham, 26 year old striker, 19 goals for Plymouth last season. And um, when it was announced, I'd never seen this before, you've got the manager of Rotherham United doing the interview with the new player on YouTube yesterday yeah it's not a first he, he uh, oh it's not a first no, it's right. not a first though he um he likes to do something a bit different and uh you know what he's like he, he is a bit of a comedian or so he thinks so uh. it, it was very entertaining <laughs> uh freddie hardly spoke <laughs> well exactly yeah exactly no, uh, but no, he, 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 he's, he's got a good sense of humor obviously manager so uh he, yeah. he does different things infectious absolutely <laughs> infectious okay uh, you might have been there as well what are we talking about we're talking about hillsborough on crikey the date was 19th of december just before christmas 2001 and sheffield wednesday were in a league cup quarter final at home to watford uh, and, June, and it was a convincing home win. Uh, I remember uh, covering this, I think, for the uh, for the Daily Mail. Uh, you were there, weren't you, Paul? I wasn't, no. Oh, you weren't there? I was working for Barnsley at the time. Said you was. Right. Sorry, mate. Right. <laughs> no. I had but, to get it on YouTube. But, but uh, yeah, we're going to go to YouTube. But you were there, weren't you? Well, I, yeah, I was there, yeah. Right. Definitely there. All right, OK. It well, was me. <laughs> we've, we've got proof of that. Second goal of the 4-0 win coming up. No Williams among those to aim for, but it's not deep enough. Good work from Hapshaw. Now can he get away here? He's taken on Bonanza. And might go all the way through. Oh, he has! That is a fantastic goal. Oh. Matthew Hapshaw. What a run. That was breathtaking. And maybe now has sealed his team's place in the semi-finals. How about this? Magnificent goal. A lot of confidence, a lot of poise. He's also got pace as well. Knew exactly what he wanted to do when he got in front of goal. Picked his spot. The confidence, though, to take on. Vanazza there. Went into the open ground and then went for it. Had a little glance up, saw Chamberlain. Fabulous goal. Superb. Oh, that's what it means to Terry Yorath. Matthew Hapshaw's first Wednesday goal. Wow. First Wednesday goal. And what a goal that no, it was. It wasn't my first Wednesday goal. But oh, it he was. got that wrong, didn't he? Yeah, he did get that wrong. So okay. that's bad commentary, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Other than that, uh, have you seen that recently? Uh, only last night before I went to bed. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a dream goal. That, 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 that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, come to the celebration first. Trumpet? Yeah, we, uh, blowing your own trumpet. We had a bit of um, <laughs> trombone. Yeah, a bit of banter in changing rooms, and I said I'd do it if I ever scored, and uh, I did it after that. If you so, ever scored, yeah, he wasn't on. You're 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 about twenty yards inside your own half. Yeah, um, I think that I probably should have passed it, but nobody could catch me at that point in time. <laughs> but no, it, it was a fantastic night. Obviously, it was a big game with with it being quarterfinal cup. We ended up losing to Blackburn, and went on to win it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a bit surreal because at the time you actually don't realise what you've done. And then I get quite a lot of Wednesday fans come to me now saying, oh, it's the best goal I've ever seen. And, um, we had so. Terry Curran in last week and that was a great goal. Couldn't see how he could score it from that position. That's not far behind in my view. I mean, or even ahead, I don't know. Uh, not far behind. That's no, a great goal. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And having run that distance and taken everybody out as you did, to have the composure of the, the the way you finished it as well. Very I think you were more nerves, Alan, than composure. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I better just hit target here and look left for me when it. <laughs> no, it's just just a great goal, um, and I'm sure everybody's uh, enjoyed seeing seeing that again. Particularly you, because you've you've actually you, you weren't there at the you weren't there at the game. It's one of those that I, I remember being there and reporting it. It actually I. It looks better to me, even better to me now than I thought it was mm. at the time, because you don't catch it. And you got it 20, 25 yards in, in your own half. When you're watching it live, you imagine I was always oh, run from the halfway line. You kind of almost edit it, edit it yeah. down. Talking of editing down, we've only got 20 seconds left to the uh, interval. In part two, we'll talk again about transfer manoeuvres at the Sheffield clubs and at Rotherham United. We'll talk uh, about how on earth we're going to manage a team to victory, you and I, on Sunday at Hillsborough Arena, Paul. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know half the players, do you? No, I don't, unfortunately. No? Right. <laughs> right, back in five. <laughs> we'll see you in five minutes, sort it. <laughs>